The purpose of this mini lecture is to talk about a very common standard stoichiometry problem, one where you're given the number of grams of one substance and asked to calculate the number of grams of some other substance. Now, since this is stoichiometry, uh, one of the things we need is a balanced equation. That's our recipe. Got to start with that. And we said before, if you if you looked at my or if you watched my first video um, on stoichiometry, the heart of stoichiometry we talked about there was this problem of given the moles of substance A and getting the moles of substance B. That's really how we're interpreting our balanced equation is in terms of moles. And that's the heart of the stoichiometry. Now, in the real world, we really don't use moles very much as far as directly measuring them because that would involve counting huge, huge groups of, of particles, and it's just impossible to do that. And so we have other things that relate to the moles, and we, we have covered that in our, our Chemistry 1 class um, in a section where we talked about the mole highway. And in, in that section, we said, well, if you know the number of moles you, of, of a substance A, you could calculate the number of grams of substance A or vice versa. If A was a gas at STP, if that was a gas at STP, we could calculate the liters of that gas um, if you knew the number of moles and vice versa. We talked about how we could count up the number of particles, whether it was atoms or molecules or formula units. We could relate um, the moles of substance A to the number of particles of that substance. And likewise, we could do the same thing for our substance B, where we could talk about the grams or the liters of, of a gas, if it were a gas at STP. Or we could talk about the particles of, of B, the atoms, molecules, and formula units. Now, in this particular problem, if we could, we, we could talk about all these different relationships, but the, the one that we're most interested in is this relationship between uh, the grams of substance A and the grams of substance B. Again, it's a very common type of problem. It's probably the number one type of problem you'll see in stoichiometry. And so this is the, in stoichiometry, this is the one thing you would want to get good at. It's going to pop up in all sorts of problems. So let's just focus in on this a minute and say, okay, if we take a look at this, this is kind of like we have another little roadmap here. Uh, and we see we got, we've got three sets of arrows there. It looks like we're going to have three steps to get from grams of A to grams of B. And sure enough, we do have three steps. And the first step would be to convert our information about the number of grams of A, which are given in the problem, and do a step to convert and find out how many moles of A that would be. In order to do that, it's a molar mass problem. And if you are unfamiliar with how to calculate a molar mass, or if you've forgotten how, you can check out my video on that one too. But this, this video assumes you already know how to do that. Our second step is this, again, this heart of stoichiometry is this mole ratio that we get. And for that, we use the coefficients from our balanced equation for this step of our calculation. And again, that's the subject of my first stoichiometry video. And the third step is now that we've gotten that information about the moles of B, is to use that information to convert back from moles of, of substance B to grams of substance B. And, and this is just another molar mass step. So the three steps are going to involve either a molar mass or it's going to involve the ratio uh, of the moles that we get from the balanced equation. Now, you could do this problem by setting out and doing three separate calculations and stopping each time and calculate an answer and writing that answer down and round, trying to figure out where you're going to round the number. Um, but if you have if, if you have my class, you, you, you'll know that I'm a big fan of dimensional analysis. I like setting it up as one uh, one calculation, and so there's only one time you're going to stop and, and worry about where to round the number and write it down, and I just found that that leads to a lot fewer problems if you set it up that way. It'll, it's, it gets to be a very kind of consistent way of going about it. So we take a look at this. Say, okay, here's an example problem. Here we have our, our balance equation uh, for the combustion of propane, C3H8. So we're reacting it with, again, with five moles of oxygen to produce three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water vapor. And the question is, if you're going to burn or combust 72.1 grams of propane, how many grams of water will form? That's a, kind of a standard type of problem you could ask. So we take a look and say, well, we're given the number of grams of one substance. And so in this case, it's our propane, C3H8. 
H8, and we're going to call that our substance A. So I wrote an A up there to remind us that that's our starting point. And it's asking how many grams of water form. That's our substance B. So we're given grams of A, get grams of B. Our first step then is to start with that information about the propane, the 72.1 grams. And our first step is to convert that from grams to moles. So in order to do that, we're going to set up our dimensional analysis. So we draw a nice long horizontal line. We know we're going to have three steps. We know that in the end, we are looking for units of grams of water. And again, our first step is to uh, convert from our grams of the propane into moles of propane. So we're going to set this up so our, grant, our units of grams of C3H8 cancel out. So since we're starting with the 72.1 grams above the line, we're going to put our, our conversion factor grams of C3H8 below the line. And we're relating that to moles of C3H8. And so we'll put the moles on top. Now, when we go to put in our numbers, a couple of things. One is this is a molar mass step. It's always on the basis of one mole. So we're going to put the one mole in there. And we've snuck in our answer over there. I'll pull that away for the moment. Uh, so this is on the basis of one mole. So we put one mole of C3H8 in there. And we have to calculate the molar mass. And again, if you don't know how to calculate a molar mass, go back and, and learn that because you're going to need that for stoichiometry. In this case, um, I think I wrote that one down. I think it's supposed to be 44.10, not 0, 0.1. Okay. At this point, we do cancel out our grams of C3H8. And now we're, we've got our units of moles of C3H8. Okay. Our next step is to convert from the moles of our substance A to moles of substance B. So in order to do this, this is where we're going to use our mole ratio. So we're going to put it in so our moles of, of our propane cancel, and we get to units of moles of our water, which is what we want our information to be about the water and our final answer. And this is the step, and this is the only step, where we're going to use the coefficients from our balance equation. So we look up above and say, well, in our recipe, it says we're going to produce four moles of water for every one mole of propane. And notice we didn't have a coefficient in front of the C3H8, and they just assumed that that meant one mole. If it wasn't one mole, we wouldn't have bothered to write it in there at all. Okay, so at this point, we have now canceled out our moles of C3H8. If we stopped and did our calculation now, we would find uh, the number of moles of water. And the question is, they ask us how many moles of water are going to form. It's asking how many grams of water form. So our last step is just going to be another molar mass step. So we set it up to cancel out our moles of H2O and get into units of grams of H2O. And we need to calculate our molar mass of water, which we calculate to be 18.02 grams. And again, this is on the basis of one mole. I noted up here in our in our balance equation, it, call, it says it's going to produce four moles of water. Well, at this step, we're ignoring that information. The only place that we're going to use that is in that mole ratio. We're comparing moles of one thing to moles of the other, because this time we just want to know how many grams are in one mole of, of water. So our molar mass are always on the basis of one mole. And when we're done, we will, we've now canceled out our moles of water, and we can calculate our final answer. Uh, which rounds to 118 grams of water. Now, with, with all of these three, like I said, these three-step stoichiometry problems are a very standard type of problem you're going to see. And they're kind of all, if you do dimensional analysis like this, they're always going to follow this kind of pattern. And so you almost have a template that you could use for this, where if you're given grams of A and asked to calculate grams of B, your dimensional analysis is going to kind of always look like this framework here. And I'm just going to uh, add a few things to it just to kind of remind you what numbers go in here. Because these are, these are how your units are going to look. And at the start, this is where your starting number is because you're given the grams of A. Your first step, your first conversion factor there is, again, it's going to be the molar mass of A. It'll have one mole of, of whatever substance A is on top, and you're going to calculate the number uh, for the molar mass of A and plug that in for the number of grams down below. That second step, again, is the coefficients from the balance equation that you plug in for the numbers of the moles. And the third step is just another molar mass, this time for the second component of the problem. And again, it's a molar mass. I can't seem to stress it enough to my students that those molar mass calculations are always on the basis of one mole. Um, 
it seems like every year somebody goes ahead and tries to use a coefficient while they're from the balance equation while they're trying to ca calculate a molar mass, but those molar masses, again, are on the basis of one mole. 